we begin in Hong Kong, where a court has convicted a prominent lawyer and human rights activist of inciting an unauthorized assembly. Chao Hang Tung was sentenced to 15 months in prison for organizing a vigil for the victims of China's bloody crackdown on protesters in Tiananmen Square in 1989. She was arrested a day before the anniversary of the killings last June. Hong Kong media tycoon Jimmy Lai has already been jailed for 13 months for joining that vigil. From on that verdict, let's cross over to Hong Kong, where our correspondent uh, Phoebe Kong is standing by. Phoebe, what's the significance of this verdict? Well, the, uh, the charges uh, relating to this sentence was basically about the, um, uh, the, the articles and the speech of Charles that, have, that she has released ahead of June 4th, 2021. That the charges were uh, related to um, a Facebook and Twitter post uh, titled, uh, Lighting a Candle is Not a Crime, Stand One's Ground, where Chao Hong Tong posted on her social media account, and also an other article published on the no local newspaper named Candlelight carries the weight of conscience and Hong Kong people persevere in telling the truth. So um, these kind of speeches and opinions expressed by Chow was uh, become, uh, become evidence of her conviction um, that uh, during the ruling, the magistrate um, met Amy Chan uh, told um, the public and also um, the defendant that she believed uh, that these kind of posts and articles are meant to encourage and persuade the members of public to attend the banned vigil. And um, that's why they mounted to incitement to the unauthorized uh, uh, um, assembly. Um, but um, we have observed uh, that Chao Hong Tong told um, the court um, after the verdict in tears that uh, she read out uh, the testimonies of the families of the victims of the 1989 crackdown in Beijing. And uh, she thought that the court should consider and heard the voice of those uh, victims that um, this kind of voice uh, were that um, the authorities trying to buried and silenced in this case. And it said that it can be foreseen that the public space to discuss June 4th uh, commemoration and massacre uh, would be further uh, silenced. Mm. Uh, tell us more about Cha Hang Tung. Who is she? Well, Chao Hong Tong is a 36-year-old barrister and also the vice chairman of the now defunct Hong Kong Alliance, uh, which is um, the, uh, the the visual organizing group um, of the very iconic uh, commemoration in Hong Kong throughout the past three decades, over three decades actually, um, but the alliance was um, uh, forced to dissolve uh, in 2021 after police investigation um, under the national security law and also a series of, of arrests on its core members including Chao Hang Tong and Chairman Lee Chek Yen, a very prominent pro-democracy figures in Hong Kong, um, that uh, Chao Hang Tong is one of the key figures um, in the um, commemoration campaign in Hong Kong, which was very iconic because uh, this campaign has um, basically distinguished Hong Kong from the rest of China, that Hong Kong uh, used to be one of the uh, remaining places on Chinese soil to uh, legally commemorate the Tiananmen uh, crackdown, which was mm. um, still remain as a political taboo in China. But now um, it seems that uh, this all uh, has gone. Phoebe Kong reporting from Hong Kong there. Thank you, Phoebe. Ronson Chan is chairman of the Hong Kong Journalists Association. Can you explain the significance of Chao Hong Tung's verdict to, to our viewers around the world? Oh, you mean Chao Hong Tong's verdict? Well, um, I, I think this is the first person that has been prosecuted by the, um, uh, on the June 4th incident um, uh, 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 assembly after the 1997. Um, this was quite sad for, 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 for the imprisonment of her. We've also been following the closure of independent uh, media outlets in Hong Kong over the past couple of days. How have you been personally affected? Because you worked at the Stand News, which closed last week after a, a big raid and arrests. Yes, I worked in Stand News before and it certainly shut down in Last week, after um, several management members have been arrested, and I have been searched by the police, my house has been searched by the police, 
for me, it is a very sad day, a very sad moment now. I, I lost my job, I lost my colleagues, I lost my um, identity of being a, a journalist. Um, I still trying to to um, um, uh, um, uh, have a well look on it, but I, I I'm still trying to um, um, get 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 well of, of my now situation. And what would you say Hong Kong has lost here? Um, I'm afraid that the loss of such these two media organisations, the Standard and the Citizen News made, um, showed a signal to us that uh, uh, the, the independent media cannot be existed in Hong Kong anymore. I'm afraid of this. Um, and, and furthermore, that uh, and you, you, we, we cannot find any very um, organized media organization which have a, a more independent uh, stance or, 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 or uh, or values in Hong Kong. Can I ask you another question? Hong Kong's leader Carrie Lam says these recent closures do not indicate a decline in press freedom as the decisions were made by the outlets themselves. What do you say to that? What I would like to say is everyone in Hong Kong and around the world understood what had happened. If they have not um, gotten any threats of their Staff safety. They won't do this. Um, I, I I won't comment Ms. Ker Mrs. Carrie Lam's saying, but I'm just. I think that everyone could see here, and I and I urge that um, the related departments or or power there um, understand that independent voice and multi voices media is needed for Hong Kong. OK, a sad day for Hong Kong, as Bronson Chan mentioned there. Uh, tough times for you as well, personally. Uh, good luck in, in, in finding a, a new job. But thank you very much for uh, explaining the situation for us here on DW. Bye-bye.